Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSGO News. As always, all of today's stories are time marked down below. Please leave a comment which story is your favorite, but let's hop into our first story, guys, all about the breaking news a couple days ago. It was also broken on ESPN, their Brazilian page, and this is in huge shocking news. I'm going to play some clips for you guys very shortly about the racism in CSGO towards the Brazilian teams out there. In particular, it was actually Team 1. If you guys don't know the history of them, they kind of came to light recently because one of their former members, known as Bit, was actually, of course, interested in the Ex Immortals roster. He's actually since joined that team as they find their new organization sometime hopefully soon in the future so of course they came to light then I'm sure a lot of you Brazilian fans if you guys are from Brazil and watching a lot of you guys are probably fans of them as well they're kind of a, on the rise a, a Brazilian team not necessarily the best team out there recently they actually lost to teams like Mythic but they are one of the better Brazilian teams out there in the lower tier scene and they actually were a, a target of some very racist actions and again I know whenever someone brings the race card into things it brings a lot of speculation a lot of two-sided arguments but I definitely think in this this particular instance, if it's not racism, it's certainly beration and it should not be allowed in any CSGO context whatsoever. For this context, it was actually a smaller tournament. It was a qualifier for, I believe, an Air Alienware Area 51 tournament. They have these uh, annually. It's a smaller tournament, but still, this is actually a qualifier for that. So you're going to run into some very odd teams out there, some very mixed and put together teams, and it will be an online qualifier. So who knows what competition will show up. In this case, it was actually a team who played against Team 1, known as NDXZ, and they actually had some very bold remarks to make during the game and here were some of them and here are the clips guys that were actually played out uh yeah this is actually the team themselves saying these things towards team one members fuck prison fuck prison Now the only real great part about this, as of right now, there have been no repercussions towards this team in the future, but I do want to say, uh, if there are no repercussions, this team certainly has no future in the first place. It was kind of relieving news that yes, indeed, Team 1 actually beat these guys and did manage to qualify for the tournament, as you can see by one of their members on screen. And the only real reluctant news here is this team certainly probably has no future. I would love to say that a bunch of organizers might get together and actually you know, have these player names on file so in the future they can't play for them, but the real, the real odds of them actually making a successful team of them themselves are entirely small, especially when you see these kind of actions. So again, no repercussions have actually been addressed so far, guys. But again, it's one thing to hate someone's country. It's one thing we're seeing pro players say, frick that guy, frick that guy. Of course, other words were used. But the worst part about it was when they Im imitated them as monkeys. That was, of course, that's a common slang term thrown towards Brazilian players out there. Is they, they are apes, they are monkeys. It's a hugely, in my mind, a racist thing to do. And this should be punished, guys. As of right now, no punishments dealt out. And that team, NDXZ, will continue to probably play together in the future, but if they are ever brought up in context, again, I'm sure people will know those names, guys, of those members who actually did those acts, and again, just a really big disgrace right now, and hopefully some punishments are found soon, and that was in big news. Also on top of that, though, we did have a few other things to mention, and that was actually in very funny news. On Inferno, during the best of three series between Mouse Sports and SK Gaming, Mouse Sports went on to win this series. Just currently, by the way, if you guys want to watch some amazing CSGO, right now we have Star Series Season 4 going on. It's an amazing Swiss format, best of three. Certainly a great performance by Mouse Sports going on right now. They went on to beat SK. They've also beat some other teams there. They choked against G2 this morning, but still, it's been a great performance so far. If you guys want to watch that, I'll link the stream down below. It's been really fun to watch, but also we did have Rops himself, of course, the upcoming star on this Mouse Sports roster, and during this particular round, I'm going to show you guys very shortly, he was actually killed by a chicken in CSGO. Certainly a glitch. He actually prompted this tweet out uh, to the CSGO dev. I did not know this personally. I didn't know this uh, until actually right now that chickens could actually block the doors. I didn't think that was actually a glitch in the game, but apparently it actually did get Rops killed. If you guys saw the round live, here's what happened. But it's too little and too late. Fur has done a massive job. And with 10 seconds left, Rops has to hold on to his gun. Chicken blocking the door? I've not seen that before. If that gets him killed, oh my god. A chicken block in the door just got Rops killed. And I guess I've just never seen this in competitive play. I'm not sure it's ever happened in competitive play before, but according to Rops as well, this happened multiple times throughout the game. That same chicken was blocking that same door. And it was also brought about questions. When I think about this, I think of A-side on cash. That same squeaky door, of course, a different texture. You cannot break the metal door, but you can break the wood door and kill the chicken through it. My question is, if this actually happens uh, on Inferno, can this happen on cash? Can that door be blocked? Can a metal door be blocked? But maybe not. Or can a, can a metal door not be blocked, but a wood door can be? That's the real question. 
question. So of course that should be fixed hopefully sometime soon. Now also on top of this, a lot of you guys did comment optic on my last video. This is not actually going to be CS good news. It'll be esports news out there and drama in the optic gaming scene. If you guys are North American fans or optic fans, I'll explain this. Otherwise you can skip this story down below. This is actually a story between Hector, the co-owner of optic gaming and also Hitch, one of their content creators and their former videographer, also an editor. He has, he does a lot of things for the team. Now I do want to clarify before I get into this story, I am a huge fan of both of these guys. I'll link Hector's channel down below as well as Hitch's channel down below. Hector does great vlogs. He's one of the most active CEOs and owners of an esports uh, team you will ever see, probably ever see, uh, over 800,000 subscribers on his channel. And this is all we know as the public so far. So again, this is my own opinion. This is all to what I know, my, my knowledge so far. I'll try and link some things on screen and also down below for you guys to watch through. And maybe you guys can explain the situation to me. My overall message though, if Hitch or Hex does actually watch this video by some small chance, I would love to see a sit down episode either on Hitch's channel or Hector's channel to see what you guys think and actually finalize what is going on right now. So obviously a while back we had Hitch brought on by Optic Gaming as a videographer and editor. He had many series under his belt. They actually were sponsored by Brisk. He was doing a lot of their Brisk challenges. If you guys have ever seen Optic content, he also did the big Vision episodes. Vision is one of the best things ever to see. I'll link the Optic Nation channel down below where you guys can watch Vision. Pretty much a background of all the Optic esports teams. Hitch was a main reason for that going on as well as on top of that, they had the Optic Podcast. Now notoriously, the Optic Podcast had a lot of a tremendous amount and a numerous amount of occasions. They actually had a lot of audio issues, some other technical issues getting the Optic Podcast up. On top of that, apparently some vision deadlines were actually, you know, nearly not made or actually not made at all together and some other content problems by Hitch who is running all three of those, the Optic Podcast, the Vision Episodes and the Brist Challenge videos. So allegedly, uh, it was actually very well known by the public that a lot of sound and audio issues were going on with the Optic Podcast. It was not really well known though about the deadlines that Brisk had put on them for their vision episodes and their challenge videos. That was brought to us by Hector. Apparently Hitch was not making those deadlines and not making the Optic Podcast work. Now also on Hitch's side, apparently he had requested on multiple occasions a better equipment and also a team to help him out with getting these uh, these con pieces of content produced. He requested better equipment for the Optic Podcast to try and fix those issues, but more importantly he also requested to have a team under his control to actually go out and record all these esports teams. I, I sat on Hitch with this. If you guys can imagine, I really, I, it's hard to imagine as me being a, a small content creator, it's hard to imagine having to travel to wherever all these esports teams are and try and pull in content from your Gears of War team, your Halo team, your COD team, your CSGO team. They all have different seasons, different schedules. It's got to be so incredibly difficult to actually coordinate that all into a two week long period to actually make one long video for your fans. It's got to be incredibly stressful to try and do by yourself or even with one partner. And so apparently Hitch was trying to request an entire team underneath him and these requests were not met. Now on top of this, what's happened recently, and despite if you guys have not seen the Optic content, I'll link some stuff on screen, the amount of dislikes they've had has been immense. It's actually been kind of disappointing. I myself, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I disliked one of the videos because I miss Hitch's content. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to try and be transparent. I was very disappointed to see he was actually knocked off the team. Apparently as of right now, what Hector has done is he has now knocked off Hitch from being the videographer and he's put that job into a, a media company known as No Scope Media. So that's why there have been a ton of videos with hundreds of dislikes because apparently Hitch has no longer any control over the content. Although the one thing people aren't really sure right now, Hector says that Hitch still has control over Vision and then Hitch originally said that he was actually kicked off Vision. So we're not really sure who's creating Vision episodes right now, whether it's No Scope Media or still Hitch or Ride. Um, so really that's the overall optic drama we're going on right now. I, I honestly thought it was amazing to see the optic drama. I've never actually been drawn in by drama. I mean, I'm not very drawn in by any drama very often, but when this came out, I was very enticed by it. And there are going to be so many links down below. Hitch also does another series. I, I want to also point out, guys, I, I know I'm, sound, I'm sounding like I'm siding with Hitch here. They're both amazing content creators. There must be, of course, a middle ground between these two guys. But I do also want to quickly say, Hitch is one of the better optic creators out there in terms of general content. On top of him doing the podcast, vision episodes, all the Brisk, uh, the Brisk Challenge videos, he was also creating all of his own content. And he was creating content more frequently than just about any optic creator. Maybe Pomage was above him and a few others like, like Big T, if you guys follow Optic Gaming very closely. So he was doing a lot of content for Optic Gaming, a ton of content that was also very high quality. And so that's why I do slightly side with him on this argument. I'm going to link his Around the Bar episode where he explains the issues down below. But I'll also uh, link down below for all of you guys, Hector, who has never done this in the past, to my knowledge, guys. He dedicated an entire vlog to talking about the issue. I'll link that down below too. So these two, I think they're butting heads, but they're still also being in each other's videos recently. So I do a request from you guys, Hector, Hitch, please do a sit down video, clarify, clear the air. What is going on with optic drama right now? Who has control of what in terms of videography? 
but that was the drama, guys. Hector, the co-owner of Optic, or I'm not really sure where he stands anymore ever since that the outlaws had their money invested. Hector versus Hitch. That was the Optic drama, guys. Who do you side with? What do you think about that? Anyway, let's close out today's CSGO news episode. And I actually do want to talk about Optic Gaming and their CSGO team. I also want to talk about, ask you guys a question to comment down below. What free agents are out there right now that you think should have been signed? Of course, we had Optic Gaming release their entire CSGO roster a couple weeks ago, and the only player that was actually, uh, you know, re-signed from that roster was actually Magist, of course, to Astralis. Ever since then, though, they still have four players who have been unsigned. We're currently inside ESL Pro League, inside pretty much the, the high point of a season right after their major and it's really a poor time to be signed by any team out there so now we have four free agents that's of course Alu, HS alongside Mixwell and Freiburg who have still yet to be signed so my overall question is will these guys be signed and what teams want them and also comment down below what free agents are also out there who have left other teams who you guys think belong on top tier teams and maybe should be signed in the future so of course I did want to briefly talk about this we had HS stand in for the first two days of Star Series for Team HR or Hellraisers he actually stood in for Issa on that lineup Issa had actually had problems acquiring his visa and I thought maybe potentially HS would join that roster permanently. They were trialing him out but it just actually was cleared yesterday guys by HLTV. Issa missed the tournament the first two days because of a visa issue and HS will not be signed by HR at least not anytime soon. On top of that we also had a couple days ago uh, Alu, a fan favorite by many of you guys, he stood in for Team Havu and that was because one of their members actually had a fever. There was no other reason behind that so it still seems going forward all these Optic Gaming guys, you almost, you have to feel really bad for these guys. They, They were released at a very very terrible time in there in this time of season to be signed by other teams out there would be maybe a very dangerous bet by other teams so who will sign these guys who knows HS, Alu, Freiburg, Mixwell all very sought after talents in my own opinion but who will sign them that's the big question guys I do feel bad for those players so hope you guys are on today's episode of CSK News if you guys did please leave a like down below or maybe a comment or maybe anything as always my name is Jake Marmar like you I'll see y'all next time